I'll just uh, I'll talk to you a little bit about what we do. So we are the showstoppers, and um, what we do is, well, our show we improvise musicals, okay? So we make up musicals on the spot in front of paying audiences, who hopefully then don't leave afterwards, okay? And you might ask, uh, I've had a lot of people wonder how it's possible. Even when they've seen a show, they still go, but uh, uh, I don't, how did you, what? How is that possible? How can you actually do that? What is, what's happening there that allows you to be able to create something so complicated as a musical, uh, with staging and choreography and dance and so on, uh, without having you know, rehearsed it and pre-planned? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, uh, we work very hard. And people again say, well, why are you, what do you need to work hard for? You're improvising, right? It's very common. Uh, yeah, we don't call it rehearsal, uh, because it's not really rehearsal, we call it practice. Because we are not rehearsing a scripted thing, what we're doing is we're practicing getting better at the skills. Because it turns out creativity, um, which is what we're all sort of you know, trying to get good at, what we're trying to use here, creativity, a lot of people kind of think that it's, first of all, they think it's a gift given to people. And some people have it and some people don't, and aren't they lucky? They can create, they can write books, they can write music, they can do all these things. And other people don't have it. Oh, you know, the muggles who just sit there and it's really hard. Yeah, creativity is not a gift. Creativity is neither, is it a kind of an art that you can sort of study and get better at. It's a sport that you have to practice. All of us here spend a lot of your lives blocking other people's ideas, okay? And you do it for very good reasons. They're very good evolutionary reasons for a start. Uh, because a lot of people are trying to sell you stuff you don't want, or because they're in your way, or because they have different agenda to you. But the problem is that that same thing, it's very, uh, very capitalist driven as well, in that kind of environment, corporate environment, it's very much about, okay, is this gonna, how's this gonna affect me? Uh, am I going to do well out of this meeting? Do people think it's my idea or not? So in meetings, you're constantly battling each other. Yeah? Because, in fact, it turns out a lot of us spend a lot of our time saying no to each other. Now, in improvisation, it has a rather unique side effect of practicing all this stuff. And the unique side effect is that you have to learn to say yes immediately to other people's ideas, because if you don't, it falls apart on stage and we look like dicks. Okay. <laughs> So it's actually quite, it's a good testing ground. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying it won't happen, but I'm saying at least we've got a good chance that it won't. And it, won't, it doesn't work if you're going to go, oh, I'm not sure about that. Uh, oh, yeah, your idea was there? Yeah. So a lot of people don't do that. Instead, they will either say, no, no, I don't like that, before they've really explored the idea. Or they say, yes, but. Now watch out for that. Anyone who's been in a meeting, the yes, but comes out an awful lot. Whereas in impro, uh, the kind of classic way it's described by all the various kind of gurus and teachers is it's yes and. So you say yes immediately to the idea. Your ego, which is sitting there going, no, oh, no, I want to maintain control of this situation, has to just simply dissolve. And you go, yep, let's immediately explore your idea. And then you build on it. So we're going to show you some of that, and then we're going to build it into some musical stuff. And hopefully it'll give you a, uh, an insight into, into how we do what we do. But as I say, this is well beyond stuff that happens on stage. Can I have two improvisers, please? Anyone who wants? Yep, hey, the nearest two. Now, uh, can I have from the audience, we're going to just, exp uh, just explore a kind of a yes and situation here. So these two improvisers are going to be lovely, they're going to play well together. They're just going to build a scene, and I'm going to ask you for a situation where they could be, can I have a relationship between two people, like a mother, daughter, or a carpenter and client? Anything? A, a priest and? And a choir boy, thank you very much for the... There is also another tendency, which is uh, the love of trying to thwart people and get them in hot water. Uh, okay, a priest and a choir boy is absolutely fine. Uh, see if we can avoid the obvious jokes there. Uh, but yeah, priest and a choir boy, fine. So we're just going to start a scene, and all you've got to do, guys, is simply build and keep saying yes and s take it to different places. Okay, let's see. I've, uh, I've got the uh, hymn books. Father Edwards? Yes, you have, Peter. Put them down on the pews. On these pews here? These pews here, yes. Yes, those are my favorite pews. Looking forward to Sunday. Of course you are. It's the day that you're going to be communed. Yes, it is. Yes, you're getting communed on Sunday, Peter. I can't wait for communion, especially if you're the one who's going to do it. Oh, I will be. Of course I will be. I'm always here for you, Peter. Okay, now, before we get really creepy, um... <laughs> 
But can you see what they did there, right? I mean, they actually built a really substantial world. Most of it filled in by your minds, but because they played <laughs> strong... Yeah, not that kind of mind, that's revolting, but... No, but, it, like, just in terms of big characters and an incredible situation that they had, there was the place they were in, and they built it in the space of 30 seconds, okay? You could easily imagine that was the beginning of a story that someone had spent a long time uh, writing about. It's because they just immediately loved the other person's idea, or at least they acted as if they did. And there's uh, <laughs> not a very important difference between the two when you're doing this stuff. <laughs> now... Let's watch uh, and see what happens when someone's blocking. Uh, Mr. Bugsley, uh, you could be our block expert. So if you could do a scene with Ruth, why not? So in this scene, they're going to do another one. Um, so can I have another relationship between two people? An artist and interviewer. An artist and interviewer. <laughs> now, how very relevant. So, Andrew Bugsley, you're going to play uh, Jake Chapman. <laughs> And Ruth, you're going to play Julian, okay? So, this works out rather well. So, what's going to happen is, uh, Andrew Pugsley here is going to block the ideas, like even the idea of why they're there, which is rather what happened before, in fact, which is why it was so funny. It's this worth <laughs> mentioning, by the way, because I thought it was, it was fabulous. Uh, but it's funny, when you hear a block, when you hear someone going, no, but that's not... Actually, you, you get a comedic rhythm from that, because the reality isn't the reality. You ask a question, you're going, yeah, but no, you're wrong about that. Actually, it can create laughter, uh, and it can be a release of tension, or it can be just simply the rhythm of it. So, we're going to explore that. So, uh, obviously, we have the incredibly enthusiastic Yes and a play by Ruth Bratt, who's been playing Julian, and then the artist. What is the artist's expertise? Give me something that he does that's extraordinary. Badgers. Badgers. Badges or badgers? Badgers. badgers. He does badgers. Take it away. <laughs> Uh, welcome, welcome. We've got some of your best badgers here tonight. Uh, That's not my work. Oh, uh, well, it's like your work, I think. No, nope, uh, mine's good. Okay. Um, what, why is your work so good compared to what is obviously not good here? I didn't say it wasn't good. Right, right. No, I mean, you wouldn't, would you? You are, you are not that kind of person. We all know. Oh, aren't I? Aren't I? It's not good. Right. Well, How does that feel? I'm glad we've cleared it up. So, I think it's still pretty messy, actually. I think if you took a poll of the people here, asked them, is it clear, they'd say no. Okay, well, we can always, we can always do a poll if that's something you would like to do. Really? I... Have you got it set up, the logistics, to do a poll right now? Uh, How are you going to do that? Are you going to do it over the internet? Is there internet access here? Uh, uh, what, are you going to show of hands? That's not exact, is it? Well, it is exact in that everyone has a hand. So <laughs> then we okay, can we'll freeze that. <laughs> so, so you get the idea. Awkward, yeah, but also, <laughs> but actually, being a blocker, you absolutely don't need to be, uh, you don't have to be someone who's also uh, nasty. Uh, you actually can be a blocker in a kind of very uh, beneficent way. You might think you're doing it well. In fact, let's try that. So, Adam, I want you to be a blocker who is just trying to do the best for these two people. You're a boss, they've got a great new idea, you're going to block the hell out of it, but in a way that totally includes them, and it's going to turn into a song. Right. <clears throat> Yes, crack on with stuff, I think. Uh, first of all, <laughs> what is the great new product or service that these guys are going to try to introduce? Lubricant. Lubricant. Oh, it's that time of night. Uh, <laughs> choir boys and lubrication. Well, at least they've got lubrication. That's nice. Um, so, uh, a new type of lubricant. And what is so special about this lubricant? Anyone? Something unusual? It's right? And again? Glitter. Glitter. Yes, yes. Yeah. Must develop new products. Glittery lubricant is what you're going to sell to this guy, okay? So he's going to turn into, and he's going to block in a beneficent way, and then we're going to turn it into a, into a musical song. Let's see what happens. Reg, um, we've come up with something. I think you're really going to like it. Yeah. Better be better than last week. Oh, it is. It's definitely better than last week. Uh, what, what Sonia and I have been thinking, Reg, is that all too often, when you get down to business, it's, it's a bit dull when you open up your lubricant. Yeah, you know? I mean, yeah. it's just clear, isn't it? See-through. Well, what do you propose? W what if the lubricant glittered like love? That is a dreadful idea. Oh. Oh, but you're not thinking about it clearly enough. I mean, you shine a torch on it, move it around, it's like you've got a disco ball in your bedroom. A disco ball in the bedroom? Well, I mean, everyone knows that a disco ball is se sexy. Just ask the 70s. Yeah. Now, they have to try to persuade him, and the only way you can do it is to sing. We know that. I don't know, I'm unconvinced. Oh. Tell me more. Well, just imagine what it would be like really late at night When your lady's lying next to you, but she's feeling kind of tight and you know you'll see her right But you want something that's sparkle and shiny bright 
it And I'm still not convinced If you cook a little lubrication You could end up with a wince So you're bringing up the disco ball And you're bringing back a retro feel But you've got to remember the thing that lubrication More meetings ended that way. <laughs> so we thought we'd uh, uh, explore a couple of other things. Uh, another, uh, okay, this would be interesting. A very kind of uh, zeitgeisty thing is, is the angst and pressure we feel at work. And I think people often feel that they can't explore that very well. And one of the guys who absolutely, we love to improvise in the style of, and we thought we'd just do one because it's just fun. Uh, we're just going to tell you, we're gonna, is uh, Stephen Sondheim. Uh, who is a fab fabulous, a genius of musical theatre, and we thought we'd do something. We're going to get you guys to provide us with a kind of angsty modern setting, and maybe like a type of job you have, maybe one job that you actually have here that you don't like. So could someone whose job is just stressful and a bit not what they want. What, sorry? And again? Road rammers. Pro programmers. 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 Oh, programmers. Yeah. Road rammers is a stressful job. <laughs> so, what is stressful about being a programmer? N none. Go on, give me a, a word. Men. Oh, okay, interesting. So, uh, and why is that? Are you a female programmer? And you're surrounded by men. And they, what, what, and what is the problem with the men? They what, man? They're, okay, they mansplain instead of explain. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's not a word I've heard. That's interesting. Okay, they're patronizing. Okay, that's perfect. So, Stephen Sondheim would have written, clearly, a musical about programmers set in a programmer's office uh, with high-pressure programmers programming. <laughs> One of them is a woman. She's brilliant. But the men keep patronizingly explaining stuff to her. She just won't get through. This is how he might explore it in his own unique idiom. <laughs> Amazing program I just done. <laughs> I'm sure that's great, dearie. We'll uh, get onto that after lunch. No, uh, I mean it's really good. You should look at it. It makes a lot of sense oh, to people who understand programming, like me. Is it a program for sewing, dear? Oh, mansplaining doesn't need explaining. Why do they patronize me? Mansplaining doesn't need explaining. Can't they see what's in front of their eyes? Morning. 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 Oh. I just did a program. It's oh. really good. You did a program? It's... Where do I begin? Kelly, you haven't even plugged it in. <laughs> Don't you want to tell us just a little bit more about how your program works? Because it seems to spout I adore. She'll never accept that She'll she never needs accept a tutor it. when she sat down at her computer. A woman in the office. Nice. It's all ones and zeros to me. I'm sure it's just binary code. Why can't they see? It makes me want to explode when they mansplain and come to me with their me, 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 me. Don't they know? Can't they see? Don't they know? Can't they see? I did plug it in. I did plug it in. And then it's I a program the keys that you can watch. It's another question programming. Programming. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do one more quick one. Can we have someone uh, who is single? Uh, put your hand up here. Someone who's single. Put your hand up if you're single. One person over there. Fantastic. Could you, could you just come down here and uh, just walk down here? Super quick. 
Yeah, fantastic. Come all the way up here. And can someone who's single over there? Anyone who's single over there? Yeah, please come up. Great, come over here. Matchmaking. This is a, a twist you weren't expecting. <laughs> Great. What's your name? Isabel. Isabel. And Isabel, what do you look for in a partner? Let's, I'm assuming, uh, let's assume for this you're straight. You may be, I don't care. Uh, if it, you're acting now. Uh, so, but Isabel, g uh, genuinely, what do you look for in a, in a, in a man? Uh, imagination. Imagination, fantastic. We can do that. Imagination. <laughs> Bravery? Oh, great, yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and intelligence. Not beard, sadly. We're all oh, we're out of luck. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, bravery, imagination, and intelligence is what Isabel is looking for. Now, can I just, uh, just going to ask, who, uh, what do you do? I uh, work in IT. You work in IT? <laughs> yeah. Yes, don't patronize me. Uh, what's your name? Tom. Tom. Tom works in IT. And Tom, what is a, like, a hobby you've got that's not IT? Climbing. Ah, there you go. Climbing. Okay, good. I think we'll just, just have that, because we haven't got very long. So we're just going to have Tom, just stay up here, okay, so you can watch this happen, okay? You're going to meet in a club. Have you got a best friend who, who gives you bad advice occasionally? My brother. Your brother, great. Okay, and your brother's name is? Matt. Matt. Okay, so you've got Tom. Uh, someone's going to play Tom. Do you want to choose who's going to play Tom? Nearest here, Andrew Pugsy will play Tom. Uh, just to make it simple, Adam, you play Matt. Ruth, you will play Isabel. We're going to have a song uh, about the first meeting, the uh, relationship between Matt and Tom, and how they get it together. Can I have a, just a great, a great musical or musical composer that you think is wonderful? Anything you like. Do any of you ever see musicals? What's it? Gershwin. Gershwin, I heard. That's classy. You're a classy crowd. Okay, Gershwin. This will turn into a Gershwin song and this will end our bit. Take it away. Hey, Tom. Hey, Matt. <laughs> that was a great climb. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good workout. I don't feel like stabbing anyone tonight. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I think we got all this on lastminute.com. Hey. I know that lady, it's Isabel. She comes in here looking for love every day. She's got good footwork and she's secure on the rungs. I've seen her around, I've been wanting to ask her out for weeks now, Matt. But why don't you? I'll just drop down a little. Hi. Hey, Isabel. I don't suppose you could help me with something. Um, I'm thinking about programming and I need some intelligence. I think you've got all the intelligence oh. you need, Isabel. Gosh. You just need to be able to stand up for yourself. Oh, wow. Thanks. Um, you know my name. I've been stalking you. Yes, it's a bit creepy. <laughs> Of course, he pulls out the only trick in the bag if you were being really creepy and stalking someone, which is to sing in the style of Gershwin. <laughs> Let me explain how it really is, Isabel. Please do. Oh, I've seen you around and you over there. And I know you've seen me watching, but you shouldn't be scared. Yes, I'm the man who you I could save. I'm smart and clever, and don't you know that I'm brave? Well, I'm looking for a guy who can climb up a wall, mm -hmm. who's brave enough to catch me. Should I fall? Oh. And if I give him an equation,
please take your seats. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been the Showstoppers. Thank you. If any of you are interested, uh, we actually have one show in London before the end of the year. Normally we tour around the place, but don't you want to see a full show? If this titillates you, please come and watch us. We're at the, we are doing a big new thing at the St. James's Theatre on the 23rd, 26th, 26th, 26th of October at the St. James's Theatre at 7 p.m. So St. James's Theatre near Victoria, and we yeah, we'd love to see you there if you can come. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>